thank you, Robert, and uh, thank you for that warm welcome, uh, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you for being here today. Uh, above all, thank you for doing what is right in defending the inalienable right, the human right of the religious freedom. Uh, in the scripture, St. Paul writes to Timothy, and he said, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And that's true today. Uh, indeed, despite two millennia of preaching love and peace, Christians are persecuted all over this world. Uh, India, Pakistan, Indonesia, North Korea, China, Nigeria, unfortunately, many, many other places. Uh, when America was founded, groups came here to America for religious freedom, specifically. Uh, in my state of Pennsylvania, William Penn advertised on the continent for the religious minorities to come to Pennsylvania. And we have religious minorities still, such as Quakers and the Amish and Mennonites and Moravians and others. And for Pennsylvanians today continue that tradition of respecting each other even when they disagree. And uh, many around the world do not. In Libya, for instance, ISIS has executed dozens of Coptic Christians for refusing to deny Christ. In Mosul, for the first time in 15 centuries, there's no Catholic Mass offered today because the city's Christian population has fled for safety. In northern Nigeria, Boko Haram bombs churches. In China, churches must be approved by the Communist government to be allowed to function, making the Communist Party effectively the definer of doctrine in that country. And this audience, I'm sure, knows only too well about these atrocities. Uh, we don't need to be reminded of them. But perhaps nowhere on earth are Christians as threatened today than in the lands trod by the sandals of the apostles in the Middle East. Eleven out of the twelve of those apostles became martyrs, dying for their faith in Christ. And today the blood of their spiritual posterity is still being poured out like a libation. In the Middle East, brutal Islamic terrorist groups are trying to sift Christian communities like wheat. We should remember, in 1939, Hitler reassured his comrades that they could get away with genocide. He asked, quote, who after all speaks of the annihilation of the Armenians, end quote. Tyrants and evil men count on the indifference of the world. And the fact that you're here uh, shows that you're not indifferent, so thank you for standing against religious persecution. Those of us who have been entrusted with uh, authority in government especially have a grave responsibility to serve the common good and to labor for the least of these, our brethren. So let me speak about three specific actions, and, and my fellow legislators uh, can can help in this as well. First, uh, I would urge um, my colleagues, many of whom uh, have spoken, to join in supporting my bipartisan resolution calling for an end to anti-blasphemy laws. In places like Iran and Saudi Arabia, these laws are being used as a pretext for brutality against religious minorities. Minorities. Perhaps the most famous case is uh, that of Asia Bibi, a woman in Pakistan who witnessed her Christian faith uh, in a conversation with her friends, and for that she's now in jail. She was sentenced to hang. That is under suspension while she appeals. Uh, if we believe in religious liberty, then we must oppose these laws, these uh, anti-blasphemy laws, which effectively set up uh, a state religion. Secondly, as many of you know, uh, I serve as co-chairman co of the Tom Lantis Human Rights Commission, and this year the commission has conducted hearings on ISIS. We'll shortly have one um, a hearing on Egypt. I invite my colleagues to join us in the Human Rights Commission, uh, attend our, our bipartisan hearings, and uh, invite all of you to join us and to join in some of the commission's activities and letters. And finally, I ask my colleagues to support the Shabazz Bhatti International Religious Freedom Act, which I introduced in March, this legislation would equip the State Department with the authority to sanction non-state actors 
We can sanction states, but not non-state actors. So just as states try to coerce religious minorities, non-state actors like the Muslim Brotherhood, like Boko Haram and others commit direct uh, violation uh, of human rights. And so I think it's critical that we pass that bill. Those of us in Congress must enact legislation to uphold the dignity and rights of all people, everyone to whom much is given, him, much shall be required. We cannot let the terrorists or the tyrants continue to expect indifference. Christians, people of goodwill around the world must unite in defense of the persecuted and in uh, for the human right of religious freedom. So. Um, let me say in conclusion, I thank all of you for your work on behalf of the vulnerable, the silenced, the outcast. Times like ours today can be overwhelming, but we should not be afraid. God promises in the end to wipe away every tear. And he said this, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you for your good work and hope you have a good conference.